Alright. How did I get this crazy looking hawk bill? That's literally a damn one one step up from a piece of garbage. How did I get this like this? Granted, it's not perfection. It's not perfection. But it is so much better than it was. This thing came and I could probably have cut paper better with a butter knife that was in my kitchen. But that's a crazy blade shape. I like it. And I'm going to talk about, really, even though this is a piece of utter garbage, this knife literally gets duller the more paper you cut. I mean, look at that. I've cut all this. The more you cut paper, the more this steel gets dull, it seems to me. But the reviews on this knife on Amazon looks like most of, most of the ones that I read seems like they were written by 10-year-olds. People with not a clue. So, let's get into it, and I'm going to show you how I actually did get this knife somewhat sharp. I mean, as sharp as that is, and it's a kooky-looking hawkbill. What is this utter piece of of garbage. Ooh, it's a Smith & Wesson Extreme Ops. But what it is, it's sort of a Hawkbill Karambit style. I am a sucker for a knife that has the thumb hole. Absolute sucker for it. If you're a viewer of my channel, you know this is the Holy Grail. Cold Steel Tiger Claw, right? I actually have two of them. It's called a spare in case I lose it. But that's not why we're here. We're here to talk about this. If only somebody made this knife with a high quality steel. This is 7CR MOV. It's a cheap Chinese junkie, you know. It certainly isn't S30V, or it certainly isn't CTS XHP. Okay, I mean, that this stuff is wicked, all right? But if it was at least something in the upper tier of steel, because this is a royal pain to sharpen. Uh, the steel, it's just all over the map. It's a stainless steel liner lock. Really good lockup, right? Thumb studs, fake G10. Might be real, I don't know. It feels good. It feels good. And the liners turn in to the karambit ring. Okay. But this knife, besides having shit for steel, right, has a major flaw. And believe it or not, I was so taken with this knife. I love this. I just, it's, it's cool. I love that blade. If anybody out there could please make this knife instead of a 1999 knife, you make this thing 
a $69.99 knife because you are upping your game on this, this would be pretty god dang wicked for the rest of us out there who, uh, you know, we like a substantial knife and we're suckers for that finger hole. Here's your major flaw. Right here. Do you see it? Believe it or not, I didn't in the beginning. I did not see it. Do you see it? It only makes 150% sense that this goes in your pocket this way with the finger hole sticking up out of your pocket. There's only one way. And that would be the correct way. This is so because the knife is heavy up here, light down here. This is the wrong way with no chance at changing it. Thank you, Smith & Wesson Extreme Ops. I don't know who makes this. They slap this Smith & Wesson. It's some conglomerate over in, you know, Chinese BS. The correct way. Stick this in your pocket. That ring is right there. Bam! It's out of your pocket. Bam! You need it one more time? Bam! It's out of your pocket. That is the dumbest shit I've seen. They put, uh... Oh, it doesn't even say it on here. Sometimes you're super pieces of shit, right? Will literally say, stainless. <laughs> right? But, I mean, we're talking good lockup. It's substantial. This, I don't have one of those little drug scales that y'all knife nerdy dudes have. You're right. I'm not a knife channel, I guess. I don't have one of those little drug scales, you know, the way. But I would bet these are very, very similar. If not, maybe a little heavier. I don't know. It's heavy. I think they're heavier in a different way. All right, so how do you sharpen? But when you have a hawk bill, how do you even get this? How do you get a knife like this even sharp? And I cut a bunch of paper, and that thing already is not what it should be. I also uh, strop this. This is another little thing that I have showed in the past. Here's an old broom handle. Took some heavy-duty cowhide, tacked it, some uh, polishing compound on it. I used Dr. Gary's Diamond Dust compound, polishing compound. And since this is sort of a roundish blade, this works right here. This works right here. A round, and I turn it like this. I turn it as I'm doing it. Okay. So that works versus using something like this, where when you put this down on there and you're going to strop it, you're only hitting here and here. That's the only place you're hitting because of the curvature. So you can't strop this on a regular strop. I made this. And let me tell you, it works especially with some of Dr. Gary's diamond dust. This puts just the finishing touches on this. But how do you sharpen a blade like this? That's how you sharpen a blade like this. A crock stick sharpener. You don't have to use this one. This, of course, is the world famous Spyderco Triangle Sharp Maker. This is probably the best crock stick, I guess you'd call it crock stick, sharpener in the world. If they make a better one, I certainly don't know about it. 
Now, I've got the red stones in here, and that is the ultra, ultra fine. How did I take this from a butter knife? I mean, literally, garbaggio. That's Italian for junk. Okay, when this was brand new. Dr. Gary, also known as Aura Walk on my channel. See, that's the reason why even on my strop, it says Dr. Gary's. He's not a doctor. He just plays one on YouTube. <laughs> He's not even a doctor. He sent me some old wore out diamond or zirconium boride or whatever. They're wore out. I mean, you can see. I still used them. This is the roughest stone that you can get for a Spyderco Sharp Maker. Here's the other one. Um, got a little bit of a roughness left on it. Not much. He used the living hell out of it. But you would normally start out with the gray stones. They're the, what they call medium. Then you go to the fine. And then just like these, these are F. You buy these after the fact. They don't come with them. These are the two that come with it. The medium and the fine. You buy these, you can buy these afterwards. They're insignated by the red. That's the ultra, ultra fine. Then on this, I don't, I'm, I'll go through all this, but guess what? There's only two bazillion YouTube videos about it. Right here, you're maybe not going to see it. 40 degree edge over here, 30 degree, what they call back bevel. So what did I do? I started on the 40 and it just didn't seem to be cutting the mustard. So what I did is I started all this project in succession. Diamond, medium, fine, extra fine. But then I kind of did a little back pedal and I did some 30 degree back bevel. I maybe shouldn't have done that. And this is how you would sharpen a crazy edge like that. You would do a recurve knife, a knife that goes, you know, maybe like this and then like that. I'm exaggerating. It would go like this. Cold Steel has many of a recurve type bladed knives. But this one, Hawkbill slash Karambit, this isn't terrible. That's why I like this. It's sort of straight. So, how would you sharpen it? Well, let me be safe here. I don't want to ever have anybody say that Captain Dave ain't safe. You hold your knife as straight as you can and draw it down, draw it down, draw it down. That's the croc stick type thing. Lansky makes one. Uh, A.G. Russell makes one. Spyderco makes one. And I'm sure there's about a thousand Chinese companies that make them. And sell them on Amazon and eBay. But this is how you would do it. You would start up here. Draw down. See, you can tell that I've got this one as maxed out as possible. Because these stones will end up talking to you. You can tell by the sound. Okay, this one's talking to me right there. It's talking to me. It makes a little bit more noise. Now, one thing you can't do with hardly any of this, and even with these diamond stones, is re-profile a knife. I've got, from original purchase, I probably got three hours into this knife because it was such a piece of trash that, I mean, it wasn't even sharp when I got it. But let me, let me answer the question. 
So Dave, why did you buy that 1995 knife? Because it's so god dang cool, that's why. I bought it because it has this and just a really cool blade, blade shape. And it has great lockup and it's got great flick. And then I looked at this afterwards and I went, oh shit. I think I'm almost gonna try to change this over to here myself. And I'm gonna turn this thing around somehow. I might put it where it's gonna arc in through here. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I might do it. This is how you would sharpen a hawk bill. A recurve. And it does it absolutely effortlessly. You're not gonna be able to do this on a stone, a flat stone, because of the curvature of the blade. See? It sort of wants to do it. Look. But let me tell you, folks, that is mega better than the way it came. I can't carry this knife. I'll leave you with that. I cannot carry this knife, being that it is so upside down. But the other thing I wanted to touch on, a Spyderco Sharp Maker, it takes care of all blade types very lightly. And look at the curvature of that blade. Then take my round strop with a little Dr. Gary's diamond dust on it and just lightly smooth this out. As I said before in other videos, I won't carry a knife as an EDC if it isn't unique. Alright, thank you for watching. Remember, very soon, there's going to be a big video that isn't knives, and it's a total different departure from this channel. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. And don't forget, check out the Spider Co. Sharp Maker. I'll have all the links below, and I'll see you on the next one.